this is a momentous occasion because it is the culmination of about three months work and 79 pieces of laminex. We're going to have such a big party. We're just going to get so drunk. drunk. <laughs> I'll come down the day before and we'll fill that fridge full of beer. We'll sit here and drink it. We'll sit it here all. and drink it. If you don't know whether something's sticky or not, just touch it. You'll soon find out. <laughs> Someone has decided to paint the whole cockpit because that wasn't in the original plan. So that might have been me. Can't you paint over blobs of silicon? <sighs> Nuts. Plan C is if we can't get anybody. Don't bother guess. to do it. As you can see, it's all marital bliss and harmony aboard the good ship Brilliant 2. Do a refit with your spouse. It's excellent for your relationship. So what I want to ask you, babe, is considering your reaction when it was first decided that we would have to do the cockpit and we were almost going to get divorced, what do you think now? Well, I think it's good that we did it. The moral of the story is that your wife is always right. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44, built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Welcome along for the ride. So this is our um, nav area here. This back here has been uncovered while we've been pulling everything out and uh, these are obsolete poles that haven't been in use certainly since we've had the boat someone's probably had a stereo in here i don't know what went in there there's another hole there hf radio was up here so i'm just making these infill pieces from half inch marine ply and more than anything it's to just um, put back the structural integrity that these um, these pieces of plywood give to the boat this one especially up here is actually a lateral bulkhead so it's it's doing something to help the stiffness of the boat it's in there for a reason it's supporting the deck this is the deck head here that's the side deck above that putting back all of these pieces glue them back in before we put laminates over the top and then that'll give us a fresh canvas really to put whatever instrumentation or, or whatever goes back in there if anything just cut a piece for here. I'd normally slide that down the back here, press it up against the against the back, make the outline. It doesn't have to be a really accurate cutout. Epoxy glue will, um, you yeah, know, it's gap filling and it's so strong. Um, anyway, we'll just draw the outline with the texture. If it's moved like that did, and I drew a wrong line, what you got to do is put a little little dart like that, a couple of little marks to show you that what the proper line is that you've got to cover. We'll go away and cut that out. Do yourself a favour as they say and get yourself um, a pretty cheap full set of straight edges for this sort of laminex and cutting ply and everything. We're going to use wet area laminate panel. You can get it in any hardware store. Um, it's going to be a shiny white nice finish to the inside of the locker so we're going to glue these in from this side there's about a mil gap around this all around we'll make sure that's completely full of glue and i've just screwed these um these pieces of scrap three mil ply on there so it makes it pretty easy to fit in you just press it in until it contacts the ply when the glue's nearly gone off you can actually twist these a bit just to break the contact with the glue then you can take them right off once the glue's gone off I'm going to get all of this area all ready to glue, then I'll mix up one one mix of um, Techniglue, which is a, a thickened epoxy, specially designed for gluing timber. Well, believe it or not, that bit of laminex to the left of Julian is probably the biggest single piece that's come into the boat, isn't it? Yeah, we had to roll it up rolled it up which was very nerve-wracking because it had this very thin strip on the end which is easily broken 
we got it in it was the hardest bit to do and now i'm just going to get the excess little bits of glue off and stuff and it wants to come out in a, two, in a couple of places so i'll just get my um, blocks of tuba one and stuff in here just to hold it in place well the other thing that was different about this piece was because it was so tricky and there's no room around it or anything it was the only one where um, you actually had to apply the glue to the cabinetry instead of the sheet of laminex, yeah. wasn't it? I haven't got a space big enough to lay the sheet down and put the glue on. And also the glue would have added a kilo to the weight of it and makes it really floppy and hard to handle. And then the part behind Julian and uh, the two returns above the archway here on the other side and above the door just behind Julian's head um, as the last pieces of laminex that need to go on the cabinetry. Five more pieces are calculated yeah, and right. that this torturous phase is over. It's only been three months, two months. Mark has started it and it's end of May. My birthday tomorrow. Yay! We're going to have such a big party. We're just going to get so drunk. drunk. When I'll come down the day before and we'll fill that fridge full of beer. We'll sit here and drink we'll it. We'll sit here and drink it. <laughs> well, anyone who wants to join us can bring their own beer. <laughs> we won't have enough. So this, this little piece here, is the very last piece of fixed laminex to go into the boat. No more bits to cut out like this precisely. There's the last pattern I made. There's the bit. I've already put the glue on it. This is a momentous occasion because it is the culmination of about three months work and 79 pieces of laminex. today and not have the familiar sight of Julian gluing in pieces of laminex. I've actually just done a count up around the boat, 86 individual pieces of that imitation teak laminex that he's had to put in. I think he's probably seeing teak laminex in his sleep right now. Anyway, that bit is over. So we can move on, we have moved on, um, and I'll just take you up into the cockpit. Just turn around. And up here, we have Paint Your Wagon Mark II. You tell us what's going on, babe. Someone has decided to paint the whole cockpit because that wasn't in the original plan. So that might have been me. These two hatches here, which are, these aren't the real hatches, these pieces of plywood, they've gone away. There's one there, one there. They're, um, they're all finished with half inch teak like that. They were leaking. So we sent them away to someone we know to fix them up. I'm removing the 
the winches off of these teak combings. We're going to do this properly. We're going to give them a good sand. We're going to revarnish everything in here. Uh, give it a good clean up. All the grills, the gratings, they're at home. The wheels at home, they're already done, prepared. Uh, there's another winch to come off here. If you don't know whether something's sticky or not, just touch it. You'll soon find out. <laughs> um, filling holes over here um, for the, where our winches are going to go back. Um, this is the plug method, which I think we've covered before, where we just core out the deck. This is a plywood core in this boat, and then uh, backfill with with uh, epoxy and microfiber, and then re-drill the holes. Then, if there's a leak, it can never go into the core. So there's another six holes up there, which are uh, where the jammers go. And we've done the same thing on the aft cabin top. There was a, a stainless steel frame here, which carries our life raft. That's gone off. What we're trying to do is farm out as much as we can. These are our um, sheet winches. We've got five sheet winches. One's for the mainsail. These are the primary winches for the Genoa. There's two of each of these. And these are for the staysail. These are all going home. They're going to be um, put in a bath or something and stripped down and re-greased and blah, blah, blah. So the way to take these Lumar winches off is really quite simple. You just loosen the, the uh, Allen bolts in the in the top plate here. When you put these back together, make sure you put some Tef gel or something else. Stupidly, on these ones, Lumar has used dissimilar metals. Okay, so I've just loosened those a bit. Now these are a thread-on unit, so you just give them a bit of a whack with a soft-headed hammer. Good idea if you do this on the water, like we are now, is to hang a towel down here just in case anything flicks out. Before I take that right off, I'm going to take these off, take this apart. See the corrosion that you get between the stainless steel and the aluminium? It's yeah. a good idea to try to separate those with something. Right, this will come all the way off now and then I should be able to lift the winch drum off. There we go. Some springs in there. Now this should come off. Okay. There's the poles in there. If they get stuck, the winch will spin backwards when it's under tension. But this all still works. So now we just get a spanner under there. I think it's a half inch. There we go. Now I'll just get my cordless drill. Bolts are outside, so I don't know why they're so good. I'm not going to put the same one back in. Oh, one more. One more. Okay. There you go. That, my friends, is a winch. Disassembled winch. This is the section obviously we're working on next. I know Julian said that it wasn't really part of the plan, but leak proofing is part of the plan. And um, there's a lot of crazed gel coat. You can't really see it because I can't take it off right now. There's some behind you. Yeah, oh, yeah, here I can show you what's going on here. So that's all crazed and, and just, it's just had it. You know, I'm convinced this is another place where water is coming in so the whole point is that you fix what's on the outside and you protect what you're doing on the inside what i've been doing this morning is um cleaning up the cockpit ready for uh some fixing and painting to be done i'm just about to walk my lovely husband through the extent of the damage see all this as i scrubbed all of this obviously even more of it was coming up we're back to bare fiberglass in some areas up here it's all crazed well the whole deck's like the whole coach roof there's these lumps of just clear sealant that Stops are just from leaking into the engine room right that's what i did can't you paint over blobs of silicon <sighs> nuts so what i want to do is have a quick go around with a screwdriver remove what comes off easily and then but you might find it's most of it well no, I, <laughs> okay well i'll put it another way i'm going to leave <laughs> enough bits in there to give the datum a sanding datum to go back to and then i would paint a, a slurry on here of epoxy with microfibers 
which is very strong structurally and epoxy sticks to absolutely everything. And then we go over with our filler. Um, not quite sure which one to use, but it'd be an epoxy based one. There's quite a few pre-mixed uh, fillers, sanding fillers, that actually sand really easily. And, and then it's just a case of getting in with power tools that, where you can get in, otherwise it's hand sanding. We're going to speak to a shipwright on Saturday who's going to come and um, I'll pick his brain about what we use in these flat areas where it's just uh, minor crazing. This is something that we're going to try and enlist some help with. Plan C is if we can't get anybody... Don't bother guess. to do it. You can see it's all marital bliss and harmony aboard the good ship Brilliant 2. Do a refit with your spouse, it's excellent for your relationship. So what are you up to Matt? I'm just mixing the bog on Julian's lovely boat. Over here we have our friend Matt, who is a shipwright, who has come to give us a hand with the cockpit. A little while ago, I think I explained on camera what was wrong with the cockpit. I think we got some video of um, of some of this stuff in here, which at the time was just all chipping off gel coat and whatever. So Matt might be able to explain to us what all the blue is and what you've been doing. So what have you been doing, Matt? Filling and bearing and sealing up all the cracks. And it's looking a damn sight better already, isn't it? Yeah. What stage are you up to? You started painting... High building places. And that's like a primer that then fills in... All the little imperfections and then we can sand that back and get a smooth finish. We've already taken out the tread. And you can see up there that we've smoothed that out. So now that's... The lump that used to be there is gone. Yeah. Look at the back and these, look. Yeah, wow, that look looks amazing. Look at that, amazing. it's just completely smooth now. Yeah. This is the first coat. We'll put another three coats or two coats, maybe three and they'll give us a good depth to be able to sand and bear it. All right, I better go oh, yeah. and get myself back yeah, to my woodworking um, carport. Just give it a back out when Onwards. you... Okay, so we're here at Whitsunday Ocean Services with my good friend Woody, who is one of my go-to gurus about all things boat product and dinghy. So Woody, this, this tinny is what we replaced our rib with. The rib is rigid inflatable, for anyone who doesn't know. When we thought we were going to finish the boat refit in April, yeah. We were meant to be going to the Kimberley. Oh, right. And people refer to ribs as teething rings because yeah. of all the crocodiles. So we bought a tinny yeah. instead and we put this, um, the camera won't be able to see it, but we put this collar yeah. um, onto it because tinnies are notoriously tippy. <laughs> now what we're finding is that the sun is yeah. eating into it. Yeah, it'll kill it. It, it needs some protection. Yeah. And we're also experiencing a bit of a problem up here yeah. with this um, knocking into the side of the boat. So we need your expertise.
here we are. Two weeks later, one of, oh, Julian's been sacked. Oh, the, half sacked. Camera. It's me and Woody. <laughs> <laughs> and Woody is going to talk us through what she's done to the tinnies. We've put um, good old pool noodle over the gunnel so that we're giving it some protection. Then we're going to cover it with some nice matching fabric to save the good old pool noodle from being disintegrated by the UV. And we're going to attach it there so that that stays on there so it's nice and tight. We've put aluminium extrusion on here to cover over the um, buoyancy foam, which is here, underneath the cover. We had to do an experimental couple of different ways of attaching Velcro to this foam, because the foam, one, MEK would eat it, and two, our good glues they're heat activated, so I needed to make sure it would work. Gluing the Velcro on was not an option, so we needed to stitch Velcro to heavy duty PVC, and then that PVC is then glued to this foam. So it's a three coat glue system, two pack glue and heat activated glue. So that's going to stay there now and protect the foam. So that goes all the way up to the bow and is laced the bow. bow is just a, a flap at the front that you can undo, just lace there for extra um, support and then two pieces that can just pull off independently should you need to do any work to your foam. And then we made Sharon a hidey hole so she can hide in here. <laughs> <laughs> or put one small child. <laughs> then we put Brilliant 2 on the side as per survey requirements. We have a little sneaky feature so that should they wish to be ashore and not want anyone to know that they're ashore, they can just tuck the cover up and hide the name of the boat. We've just worked out that we actually do need to yep. extend here. Yep. So that'll finish it off nicely as well. Be a yep. continuous thing. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Woody. No problem. <laughs> this is the finished uh, product. When we were in the workshop with Woody, what we showed was what was happening here. We decided to go with some pool noodles. Sod's Law says that this gunnel will just knock against the, the hull and it just always does. Woody being the executive designer came up with this method for attaching this uh, fabric on top so you don't see that there's these funny little pool noodles underneath but we've got this nice foam cushioned collar around the gunnel now. Here is the end result um, covering the foam of the captain collar. I should really put a link to the website on this so that people understand what a captain collar is. It's a closed cell buoyancy foam. Tinnies are usually notoriously tippy and here I am I'm standing right on, on the one side, side. I can sit, sit on the gun. Side here like that and that's all good and I can come over here like you can just you know it's just gives it Gives great it stability. Stability of a of a rib, really. Yeah, I suppose that we should also say why we've gone with a tinny instead of a rib. We had a, a 2.5 meter Aquapro rigid inflatable dinghy, which we bought in Darwin back in 2006. Five, five or six. six. Yeah. Now that there's three of us, and now that the third one is growing like a weed. <laughs> it was just getting too small. We couldn't get it on the plane with all our stuff as well when we put cameras and deck chairs to go to the beach and all sorts of stuff. We were outgrowing it. We could have got a bigger rib, but also wanting to explore more of Northern Australia where is there's crocodiles and they refer to them as teething rings. So tinnies are the go-to for that sort of territory, but of course they're really tippy. So um that was the reason for the captain collar then we needed to cover the captain collar because it was degrading in the sun we also needed to address the issues like the banging against the hull and so that's why the whole 
dingy thing started in the first place. Well, the last thing to say about the tinny really is a very big thank you to Woody um, for the amazing job that she's done on it. I have to say there are actually really few people you could take a job like this to because it's completely out of the box. It's one thing to make um, covers for the tubes on all the standard ribs because they're a dime a dozen, but this was a custom build um, job and it really required a lot of, you know, just being able to do that. She said she's thinking. never doing another one. Yeah, she said she's never doing another one. So thank you, Woody, for uh, doing this one for us. Whitsunday Ocean Services is the is the company. Um, Woody and Wok have actually um, passing it over to the next generation. Clayton and Natasha are the new owners, but Woody's, uh, in fact, Woody and Wok are both still there uh, in some capacity, passing on all their knowledge of many years. Um, so the business is in really good hands. And if you're in the Sundays and you need help with, they do a, a, a range of things. It's not just um, pieces, bits and pieces for tenders, oars, life jackets, safety equipment, um, servicing. Life raft servicing, like Yeah, e life rafts, flares, e -perb. I highly recommend them. So give them a go. And if you don't need anything for your boat, um, there is also a cause that Woody's very passionate about that you might like to support. Woody and her good friend Shona are um, our local Tour de Cure riders. Tour de Cure is uh, all about trying to find a cure for cancer. Uh, they ride the Tour de Cure every year and they go out uh, doing the long haul, trying to you know get donations and fundraising and all of that. It's very difficult, particularly in this day and age when no one's got any money and things are really tough. But uh, if cancer and finding a cure is something that you care about, which I think we probably all do, then uh, if you're in the Whit Sundays and it's that time of year and Woody comes knocking in front of you, please spare her what you can. And just to uh, add to what Sharon's just been saying, we're not sponsored by them. We just um, we just like the people and um, the service that they give and uh, good place to go, good prices. We'll return to the cockpit in our next vlog, but for now, you can rest assured it was a job well worth doing and one we managed to stay married throughout. So what I want to ask you, babe, is considering your reaction at the beginning when it was first decided that we would have to do the cockpit and we were almost going to get divorced, what do you think now? Well, I think it's good that we did it. And it's good that we didn't get divorced? Yeah, well, that's good as well. Always good when you don't get divorced. The moral of the story is that your wife is always right. <laughs> and on that, on that note, that's all. Well. <laughs>